Let's come to the story we've been tracking relentlessly for the last nine days. Ukraine has now accused Russia of nuclear terror on a day it captured Europe's biggest nuclear plant located in Ukraine. After intense shelling that set a training center on fire this morning, there were concerns over a nuclear disaster. But the reactors saw no damage. But the attacks have brought back fears of the Chernobyl disaster that took place in 1986. Let's get a look at what exactly happened this morning in Ukraine. The Russian invasion of Ukraine took a potentially catastrophic turn early Friday morning, sending world capitals into a dizzy. The invading forces started shelling the Zaporizhia nuclear facility, the biggest one in Europe. The first alert came from an employee at the plant who posted a message on a social media platform announcing the attack on the facility. A spokesperson confirmed the shelling had sparked a fire. The fire is a result of shooting on the nuclear power plant. I repeat, the fire has started as a result of shooting by forces of Russian Federation in the direction of the power plant. Plant authorities shut down the reactors, leaving just one working. Luckily, the fire was outside the area that housed the reactors. Even as the fire was blazing, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky issued a statement calling upon European nations to step in immediately. Europe has to wake up now. Europe's largest nuclear power plant is on fire. At this very moment, Russian tanks are shooting at nuclear reactor blocks. These are tanks equipped with thermal vision devices, so they know where they are shooting. They were prepared for this. The fire was finally brought under control four hours after the shelling around 6 a.m. The Russian forces had taken control of the facility. Work at the new plant returned to normal, ending hours of anxiety that saw the US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson urge Moscow to suspend the attack on Zaporizhia. Soon authorities sounded the all clear. We, of course, are fortunate that there was no uh, release of radiation and that the um, integrity of the reactors in themselves was not compromised. The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, experts say, is a much safer one than Chernobyl that saw the horrific nuclear accident in 1986. But in those four hours, anything could have happened. A disruption in power supply to the plant, a direct hit on the reactors on nuclear material, any impact on the process to cool the nuclear fuel, any of it could have proven disastrous. As Chernobyl has taught humanity, no amount of safety measures is enough when things decide to go wrong. With Gaurav Savant and Pavan Kumar in Kyiv, Ukraine, you're a report in here today. I want to go straight across to Gaurav Savant, who's still there, manfully reporting from Kiev. Uh, Gaurav, it's been another tough day uh, where a lot of shelling has taken place. Uh, give us a sense of how Realistic is this fear that was voiced this morning of a potential nuclear disaster. Was that just war propaganda or is there genuine fear that Russians are targeting some of these nuclear plants? Rajdeep, any attack near a nuclear power plant is extremely dangerous uh, and uh, Ukrainian President uh, Vladimir Zelensky is saying that the Russians have the coordinates and they're systematically targeting uh, these nuclear assets of Ukraine. Uh, of course, to be fair, this was an attack on an administrative building and if the Russians have coordinates, then they know that they've targeted an administrative building, a faculty and not the six nuclear power plant uh, or the nuclear reactors at, at, at uh, Zeprosia. But Zeprosia is a very crucial target and Rajdeep, the indication is in case the Russians are targeting Zeprosia, they're targeting a crucial infrastructure uh, plant of this country. They're moving far forward rapidly. They're moving forward from multiple directions and it's a squeeze 
of the capital Kiev and a squeeze from multiple sides. They have forces that are moving in from the north. They have forces that are moving in from the south. There has been an amphibious assault already and they're moving in from the east. In the Donbass region, they've consolidated. In the south, they're consolidating. Kharkiv is extremely tense. Sumy has witnessed battles where a military faculty at a university was targeted and now they're moving forward. Zeprosia, then Denepro, and it, then it will not take them time to come to Kiev. Of course, there are multiple barriers en route. Mm -hmm. People are fighting tooth and nail and that is why Ukrainian forces say the fact that that 63 kilometer long convoy from the north still hasn't been able to reach Kiev is because it is facing obstacles at multiple levels. The question remains, Rajdeep, mm -hmm. it's a big, big attack that's coming Kiev's way. They have the weapons, they have the systems. The question remains, how long will they be able to withstand this assault? And this assault is now coming much closer. Rajdeep, earlier mm -hmm. you would hear shelling in, at a distance. Now you hear it much closer and you can feel the ground beneath your feet literally shake with these, uh, with these, uh, which eat coming closer. Today we were at a location where the missile strike was at a facility very close to an airfield. So systematically infrastructure mm -hmm. here is being taken down. The attempt appears to be take down airfields, take down air defense systems, take down ground systems from where the, the people in Ukraine can resist, the forces of Ukraine can resist the right. Russian assault and then launch a ground assault. So it's, it's a very systematic attack that is coming Kiev's way in perhaps the hours and days ahead. Right. Uh, Gaurav, uh, you've been uh, tracking that. You also uh, spoke exclusively to Harjot, the Indian student uh, who got injured today in the Ukrainian capital turned war zone of Kiev, currently hospitalized. Uh, listen in to the latest tragedy that's uh, hit. Fortunately, uh, he's out of danger, but Gaurav spoke to Harjot. Listen in. We are currently at the Kiev hospital. There is shelling going on outside. And with me is Harjot Singh, an Indian student studying information technology here in Kiev. And he was injured in firing Harjot. How are you right now? Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not feeling much better. You're much better right now? Yes. What happened? You you have a fracture in your foot and you have, you're have injured near the chest. What happened? Uh, so the story was like 27th of last month. I was uh, going to uh, Voxana for, me for Metro to a week. But there, unfortunately, there the, I can't uh, board any train. I tried three to four times and I failed. So then I, did, then I was decided to go Lavi by taxi. <laughs> then we get a uh, white color sonata, and uh, we are three people in that car, and we are moving to Lavi. Were the others with you also Indians? The other no, three? No, they are the different taxi? people. They are they belong to so different. So you were traveling alone. Alone, I'm only one Indian in that car. Okay. Then? So then yeah, after that, we crossed the three borders, yeah. and after that, the third border yeah, yeah. security yeah. they uh, inform us. So sir, instead of going today try next morning because now is not safe. So you crossed three checkpoints. Yes. You were outside Kiev and you were turned back. Turned back. Then what happened? When we came back to Kiev city and suddenly I noticed that someone fired on a car and shoot it. And one bullet I saw in front of my eyes, they crossed just in front of my car from the, from my head. Okay. And I was sitting on the back side of car, left hand side. And uh, after that, we just all fold our bodies and get down, lay down on the uh, car, Were car breath. Others also injured? Yes, everyone. Everyone, everyone was injured. Everyone was in there. One bullet, my hand was like this and one bullet just insert from this my hand and goes to my chest. Sure. Inside sure. my chest. So you're very lucky to be alive. You're very, very lucky to be alive. Yes, sir. It's my new life. I, mean, I can say that it's my, it's, it's new life. Yeah, sure. The last one, Harjot is dead. It, it's, it's new Harjot.